For months, astronomers assured us three Atlas would be nothing more than a spectacular flyby, a harmless interstellar visitor that would skim past Mars and vanish into the black. But the cosmos doesn't do harmless without reason. And the James Webb Space Telescope, our most advanced eye in the void, has just delivered data that flips the narrative upside down. The numbers have changed. The trajectory has shifted. And now for the first time, scientists are whispering the one thing no one wanted to hear. Three Atlas might hit Mars, but this isn't just about a comet. This is about precision maneuvers, clock-like gas pulses, and an object that behaves less like a rock and more like a spacecraft. The deeper you go into the data, the clearer it becomes. Three Atlas is not drifting. It's steering, adjusting, targeting, and the red planet is directly in its path. Whatever this thing is, it's not done with our solar system. Let's dive in. When Three Atlas was first spotted on July 1st, it looked like any other interstellar interloper, a fast-moving blur with a glowing coma traveling at speeds never before recorded for an inbound object, nearly 87 kilometers relative to the sun. At that speed, it crosses the Earth-Moon distance in under 80 minutes. But what stunned scientists wasn't its velocity. It was its behavior. Comets typically slow fragment or stabilize as they approach the inner system. But three Atlas began accelerating subtly but consistently. And even more disturbing, its trajectory began tightening. Slight course corrections became evident, and the object's coma, its surrounding halo of gas and dust, doubled in brightness within weeks. Spectral analysis revealed intense spikes in ultraviolet energy and CO2 outgassing at rates never seen before in any comet. It was acting less like a drifting chunk of frozen rock and more like a guided missile. And that's when Webb's deep field sensors caught something that changed everything. Rhythmic pulses coming from the tail, not chaotic jets from sunlight melting ice, but deliberate thrusts in perfect 17-minute intervals, a pattern, a signal, a maneuver. As Webb, Gemini South, and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory continued tracking the object. The numbers started telling a terrifying story. What was once a near miss had become something far more dangerous. A revised impact distance of just 1.95 million kilots from Mars, a hair's breadth on the cosmic scale. And worse still, simulations showed that even 10 kilometers s of added velocity, a fraction of what's already being measured in those gas pulses, could be enough to shift its path into a direct hit. Think about that. Just a nudge, a whisper of thrust and Mars becomes ground zero. This level of control is unheard of in natural bodies. It's as if Three Atlas is using its own outgassing as microthrusters, adjusting its approach like a spacecraft would. Even more disturbing, those thrusts are perfectly aligned with the planet's orbital plane. Scientists aren't just tracking an object anymore. They're watching it aim, and the window for impact keeps narrowing. Between September 19th and 30th, any single outburst could be the one that pushes it over the edge. It's no longer just amateur theorists or sci-fi enthusiasts sounding the alarm. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb and his team have published a paper proposing something bold. Three Atlas may be an engineered probe. The data backs them up. Radar bounces from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and Goldstone antennas returned metallic echoes, not the soft, watery signatures of typical comets, Inside sources from NASA describe the radar reflections as unlike anything we've ever seen. Add to that the green needle-like stream seen in amateur high-exposure images. Three glowing beams converging toward Mars, pulsing in sync with the exhaust vents, and the picture becomes undeniable. This object is not behaving naturally. Loeb suggests a scenario where three Atlas could be deliberately targeting Mars to crash, or worse, to deliver something. Probes, signals, spores, whatever it is, it's not a coincidence. Mars is being approached with surgical intent, and humanity is caught watching an operation we barely understand unfold before our eyes. What happens if it hits? The answer is almost incomprehensible. With a mass estimated at 10 billion tons, and a speed of 57 kilometers relative to Mars, an impact would unleash more than 2 million megatons of energy. That's thousands of times the most powerful nuclear detonation in Earth's history. The crater would be 60 kilometers wide, 5 kilometers deep, and would scatter debris across Mars' orbit, some of which could be ejected into interplanetary space. And yes, that means some of it could eventually reach Earth, 
but the consequences go far beyond just rock and dust. Mars is home to dozens of scientific assets, rovers, orbiters, experiments searching for life, climate records spanning decades. An impact wouldn't just destroy machines, it would erase decades of research, blind communication arrays, and possibly ignite contamination events we are wholly unprepared for. ESA, Roscosmos, CNSA, and JAXA have all initiated planetary defense discussions, not against an alien fleet, but against a single object behaving just a little too much like a vehicle. For years, scientists have speculated that Mars once had life, and perhaps still harbors it deep beneath its rusty surface. Subsurface lakes, dormant microbes, ancient ecosystems locked beneath permafrost. It's one of the primary reasons we've sent so many rovers, orbiters, and landers. But if three atlas strikes, all of that becomes a biological unknown. The extreme heat of impact wouldn't just vaporize the surface. It would crack open the deeper layers of Martian crust, exposing reservoirs we've never reached. And if three atlas carries organic molecules or worse, synthetic biology embedded in its outgas trails, the fusion of Earth-independent evolution with Martian biology could result in genetic contamination on a planetary scale. Some biologists call this panspermia in reverse, not life spreading from Mars to Earth, but life being seeded into Mars deliberately. It raises a terrifying question. What if the goal was never destruction? What if the object is a delivery system and Mars is the incubator? As three Atlas approached its closest point to Mars, the James Webb Space Telescope locked onto the object for one final ultra-deep scan. Part of the result was classified for 48 hours before a portion was released to the public. But leaks from within the Webb project tell a much darker story. Shanaisha Speck and Miri instruments detected traces of synthetic polymers, molecules that resemble Earth-made plastics and carbon nanotubes intermixed with natural gases. These aren't the kinds of structures that form in vacuum or during cometary heating. These are engineered materials. Webb spectrographs also picked up persistent isotopic anomalies, notably in carbon and hydrogen, matching no known solar system object. In short, Three Atlas contains things that should not exist in space, and all of it is heading straight toward a planet that still might be alive. Webb's data was shared privately with major space agencies. Emergency task forces were convened, not because we could stop it, but because we were running out of time to figure out what it really is. As panic grew, NASA made a surprising move. Silence. The usual press releases stopped. The telemetry feeds from Perseverance and Tianwen-1 showed gaps. Questions about potential impact scenarios were redirected. Something had changed. And then, in a classified transmission later leaked by an internal whistleblower, a phrase appeared. Impact protocol initiated. What does that mean? No one knows for sure. But insiders claim a series of encrypted signals were sent from Earth-based stations to all functioning Mars equipment. Curious considering there's no known method to deflect or intercept three Atlas. Unless, of course, the purpose of those signals wasn't to protect Mars, but to prepare it. If three Atlas is an intelligent system, even semi-autonomous, it may be reacting to energy signatures, orbital beacons, or encoded pulses. And if Earth just turned those systems on, we may have just confirmed we're listening. Worse, we may have just confirmed we're responding. And whatever intelligence is behind this object, if any, now knows that we're aware. A team of cryptographers at the SETI Institute did something no one had considered. They took the current trajectory, time of closest approach, velocity and gravitational vectors, data points known by every astronomer on Earth, and translated them into binary. Then they applied standard compression algorithms used in deep space messaging. What emerged was more than just random data. It was structured, repeating. It contained a series of numerical intervals that correspond to atomic numbers. 6, 8, 14, 26. Carbon, oxygen, silicon, iron. The building blocks of both life and machines. But interspersed were prime number countdowns and spacings consistent with recursive messaging protocols. In short, the entire flight path of three Atlas may be a signal in motion, a message not delivered through radio but through behavior, through timing, through presence. This would mean we aren't simply observing a trajectory toward Mars. We're witnessing a communicative event, and the impact window itself is part of the message. If it strikes, that's a sentence. If it misses, that's another. 
And either way, the answer is already written in the stars. As the projected impact path narrowed, planetary scientists noticed a chilling coincidence. Three atlases' updated trajectory crossed a narrow corridor that passes directly above Elysium Planitia, a geologically young region of Mars known for its unusually symmetrical surface features. Satellite imagery revealed concentric ridges, spiral-like flows, and formations that eerily mimic Fibonacci patterns. 